Today's video is going to be a day in the life vlog, kind of mostly focusing on our homeschool. But our morning started off, it is 8.08 .08 right now. I have been up since 6 um, because my middle daughter had a doctor's appointment super early this morning. While at the doctor's appointment, my purse strap broke. Like, broke. And it works out because I just got a new purse. I just haven't switched over yet. So while I switch all my stuff from my old purse to my new purse, I will give you kind of a rundown of how our mornings normally go. So if you're new here, my name is Jessica and I am a stay-at-home homeschooling mom of three, soon to be four kids. So we're in our third year of homeschool now and through a series of events that I've explained multiple times at this point, both my children, who are six and eight, are actually in second grade school, like school level, um, with the exception of my oldest being in third grade math. And this is our first year, we live in Washington State, where my oldest has reached the age where we really have to be diligent to hit all the subjects and to document our time and different things like that. Our schedule that we have going right now is Monday through Thursday, we do language arts and math, and that takes up the bulk of our homeschool day. Um, we also do Bible, and we sing a song, like a hymn. That I've not been super consistent with. I chose a hymn that was just a little too long. But so Monday through Thursday is language arts and math, and then Fridays, which is today's a Friday, is when we do history and science together. And any catch-up work, if something happened during the week beforehand where we like had to skip a math lesson or anything like that, today would be the day that we would catch up on it. Everybody's caught up for now, so today is just a history science day. Normally by this time, I would be awake and the kids would either be just waking up or still asleep. I usually let the kids sleep as long as they want, um, up to like 9.30. 9.30 is when I'm like, okay, you need to get out of bed. <laughs> so what will normally happen is I will try my darndest to get up before the kids. I'm so much happier when I do. It's very hard when you're eight months pregnant to wake up <laughs> before your kids, but I am trying very hard to make that happen because like I said, I'm just so much happier, so much more patient when I've had some time to just be awake first, drink coffee, eat a little bit um, just before they all wake up. Gloria, my middle child, is usually the first one out of bed closely followed by my almost two-year-old. So I would get up before them, get myself all ready for the day, try to eat something, try to read my Bible um, before everybody wakes up. It does not happen every day, um, but that's my goal. I also try to have breakfast completely made and ready before they wake up. Again, that does not happen every day, but on the days that it does happen, things just go so much more smoothly. That was easy, okay. Bonus points in the comments if you can tell me where this purse came from. Got a hint, it's for my Second Amendment mom. So I'll try and have breakfast made and ready for them before they wake up. That way, once they do wake up, we can literally just sit down, eat breakfast, and then after breakfast I'll have them do their morning chores, which is not much at all. It's just getting ready for the day, making their beds, feeding the cat, and then I will let them play for a little while before calling them back to the table to start school. So that is how like our normal morning routine works. Today is a little funky because I just had to wake up super early and I was able to eat breakfast. I have not made anything yet, but Gloria wanted to make muffins. We're gonna make muffins together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I said, it's only 8, it's 8.17 now. My son should be waking up soon. My one-year-old actually woke up at like 6.30 they all share a room, we live in a pretty small apartment, and I went to wake up Gloria, who had the doctor's appointment, and yeah, I opened the door and I like froze. My one-year-old was in my son's bed, just like awake, staring at the ceiling, and I was just like... So I was able to just give her to my husband, and she went back to sleep with him, thank God. So everyone except me and Gloria is still sleeping. We're gonna make muffins, which will hopefully be done by the time everybody else gets up, and get this day rolling. Do not put your fingers in this. That's a good idea. Okay, first thing we need is three cups of flour. We need three of them. 
One big scoop of sugar. Sugar. You gotta fill the whole thing up. Right away, huh? Okay. Okay, so muffins are done. Girls are up. My son and my husband are still sleeping, but we're reaching that point. It's 9.15. I'm gonna get these muffins out to cool, wait about 10 minutes, and then wake the men up. I am so tired, I can tell already it's gonna be a nap with the one-year-old kind of day for me. I did that a lot during my first trimester, and not so much second trimester, but now that we're well into third, it's starting to be a thing again. I'm so sad I can't eat these. They're like 49 carbs each, which is fine if you don't have diabetes. Um, uh, that's not insulin treated. If you do have diabetes, it's not insulin treated. I'm, I would get a super high number, but that's okay. The family can have muffins. And I had Greek yogurt with keto granola. Yeah, you see the muffins. Ah, ah, ah. Hot. The, yeah, ah. <laughs> I had Greek yogurt with keto granola and cottage cheese. Not as exciting as a muffin, but it's okay. I still get to enjoy my coffee, so that's good. The spell what? Brain? Lucy? Lucy! Do you want to pouch while you're waiting? Pouch. The muffins are too hot. It's a beech nut pouches for her. I find that they're the best. Um, Amount for the cost. <laughs> Brain is spelled B-R-A-I-N. So we have this really great drawing book that my mom gifted the kids. And we have been using it so much. And it just, it's a really simple teach your kids how to draw animals book. I have a couple winners up here on the fridge. My son did this toucan. And my daughter did this flamingo. And I just think it's so fun because the instructions are really simple. Um, and it's really bonding to sit and do together too. That has been out on our table for a while now. Um, and it has caused us to pause many the homeschool lesson. <laughs> um, but drawing is a skill too. Art is a subject. So that's okay. I really need to wake up my son. Kind of daydreaming about laying back down myself. you back in. It is 11 o'clock now. As you can probably see by my face, I did end up needing to lay down for a little bit. Got my husband awake and I was just like, I cannot sit and do school right now. So just too exhausted. So I had about a 45 minute nap. My husband just left for work and now <laughs> I need to eat. Pregnancy just runs the schedule right now. I'm super hungry and <sighs> cops. <laughs> I need to eat, so I'm gonna let the kids play outside for a little while. It's a really nice overcast day. It might even store. Um, I'm so done with summer, so ready for fall, so this is nice for me. I'm gonna eat and then I'm gonna call them back in to start school. So, like I said earlier, today is a history science day. This is our setup. We do binders and I have the entire week's work put in each of their binders. <laughs>
We are using the Good and the Beautiful's Paleontology for Science. And then for history, we use Story of the World. We are doing volume one. Basically, I read aloud the chapter. It comes with this big activity book that has coloring pages in the back that I've scanned and printed so they each have the same coloring pages. Today is a coloring page, a word search, and then a map. Usually each chapter comes with a map and they have to like mark the cities and the rivers that we're learning about to make sure that they're comprehending what we read and I'm really liking it. So I'm gonna eat lunch, early lunch for me, and then we'll finally get to it. used to be divided into two countries, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. They spent all their time and energy fighting each other. But once King Narmer conquered Lower Egypt and made the Egyptians into one country, the Egyptians could spend their time on farming and building instead of on war. battery died and then the camera is malfunctioning again so we're using my big camera so it turns out okay I'm really not practiced enough with it it intimidates me because it's so big <clears throat> um, but hopefully it works out so we've had lunch we went ahead and took a break for lunch Lucy is down for nap now and we finished up history and now we're going to do science yeah science there have been dragonfly fossils discovered that are as long as your arm. Ooh. That would be a giant dragonfly. I don't think I would want to meet that in real life. Why? Because dragonflies bite. And they're, they're already this small. Can you imagine if you got bit by one that's that big? Hold out your leg. <laughs> there are millipede fossils as big as your leg. One of the reasons dinosaurs are so fascinating is their size. But how did they get so big? Dinosaur comparison, so the Gigantosaurus is as long as three whole cars. The best explanation from scientists is simple. Oxygen. What? So, they, do, they grow from oxygen? That's what scientists think. So now we're going to do our experiment. You get some leaves and give some to Gloria. We are going to put three leaves in this cup and the other two in these cups. We need sunlight. Yeah, we need this one and that one to go outside. Too bad it's not super sunny. Hopefully it'll be okay. So Joey, you take those and just set them on the patio. Uh, that one is gonna go in the pantry closet with door shut. <laughs> no light. No light. Balance it on the shelf so it doesn't spill. Fossils show us that when dinosaurs were alive, the climate varied from place to place. Plants take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. To do this, they need sunlight. I love the description portion of the leaves and oxygen activity page. Description. Good job, Gloria. Draw the locations of where we put each cup. So our science experiment ended up not going very well at all. <laughs> it's not a sunny day. It was supposed to make the water super bubbly. It didn't, so that was kind of a fail. 
which is a bummer, but that's how things go. We finished up the rest of the lesson. My camera stopped recording and I didn't know it. Um, but we finished up the, lesson, the rest of the lesson at about 1.40. So we are now completely done with homeschool for today. And that has actually been our normal lately. We kind of start around 11, and then just through the series of events, taking breaks for lunch, managing toddler behaviors, getting through old things, and ending the day around 1, 1.30 for school. Thank you for watching today's video. Give it a like if you want to see more homeschool content from me. Um, leave your suggestions if you have suggestions for any other kind of video you'd like to see from me. I do homemaking, motherhood, homeschool, all things home, basically. I put out a new video every week, and I would love to see you back here for the next video.